Fuel pump current testing is an alternative to measuring fuel volume. We're going to talk about the differences in the two as we go along. Now, you're going to use this test when you suspect a problem that appears to be fuel volume related. A couple ways to get there. You may have a fuel monitor code, and when you check freeze frame, you find out that this code sets at an elevated engine speed or at a heavy engine load. You can also use this test to check for intermittent no start and low power complaints. You may have a low power complaint before you get a lean code. Now, fuel pump problems are indicated by low fuel pressure or low volume. Pressure we can test with a pressure gauge. Fuel volume is more difficult. Fuel current testing is easier than fuel volume testing. I'm going to tell you why. There's a few differences. Volume testing may need to be done at the fuel filter or at the tank outlet for an accurate measurement. We have found that testing fuel pumps at the Schrader valve out in the manifold is not a very reliable way. It doesn't give you a good indication of what you're going to get for fuel flow. Now, expensive flow meters are a good way to test fuel volume, but they require expensive adapters and meters, and the pump is not working at fuel pressure. Current testing checks the fuel pump at working pressure like you're going to be using, and current testing can easily identify intermittent fuel pumps. We're going to show you some special tests just for that. As always, we start with the good specifications. We want to make sure fuel pump pressure is correct. We may be right off the bat find low fuel pressure. We block off the return line, do whatever we got to do, find out that we cannot achieve full pressure, and we go straight to the fuel pump. But if we have good fuel pressure at idle, remember, that doesn't mean it's going to be good fuel pressure going down the highway, and we're going to show you a better alternative than trying to stick a meter on it and drive down the highway. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to get a good schematic. We got this one out of smart spec. We have highlighted the circuit where we can do testing with a low current probe in blue. It's anywhere in this area here going down to the fuel pump. Any part of that circuit can be used, and we can use the ground if we so desire. The only disadvantage is a lot of this is under the vehicle. We may not want to get there. But remember, at some point in time, before we condemn a fuel pump, we're going to come here, we're going to check B+, and we're going to check ground to that fuel pump. Well, it'd be a good idea to put the, the adapter that we can measure current flow, our low current probe, under the hood. And that's up here at the relay. This relay is located in junction block one in front of the right strut tower. Take the lid off, find the fuel pump relay, and here we are. Now, there's a couple things you got to know. Some people say, just go check at the fuse. This particular fuse supplying power, as you can see in this circuit, goes through a splice, which means it shares power with other devices. In this particular case, we have a, a fuse that supplies the PCM. Current readings in that part of the circuit would not be accurate. So one of the things we do is we go look at the layout of the, of the relay, and we're going to go from B+, plus, battery plus, to fuel pump. That's from the top left corner to the bottom corner. If we put numbers on them, if you look, you're probably going to find an F9 and an E11. We're going to jumper between those two pins with a loop of wire and hook our low current probe around that loop of wire. That's going to power the pump up. We've taken control of it. We've replaced the relay. And we're going to power the pump up and see if it draws proper current flow. Current flow is directly related to the power of the pump, and a full power pump delivers full f volume of fuel. That's a basic assumption we're making here, and it has proven to be fairly accurate. Now, when we hooked up our low amp probe, we were down here measuring at the pump, and we decided to go ahead and hook around the pink and black wire in this particular case with our low amps probe to measure it. This is our total hookup. Nothing more complicated than this. Nothing could be easier than this. Now, what's going to happen when we look at this signal? How are we going to analyze this signal? The current forms humps in their actual ripple voltage. This happens as the motor rotates, and each brush is in full contact with the individual segments of the split ring commutator. And we're going to show you one of those so you don't have to worry about it. Now, the average current flow will vary with fuel pressure requirement. Higher fuel pressure will require more current. This is the point we're making earlier. If, for what reason, we can't get full current, we're not going to have full power to the pump. A low power of the pump will not deliver fuel volume the way it should under high demand conditions. Say that again. Low powered pumps that don't have enough current, and we'll show you why you can't get enough current. If they don't have enough current, they are going to produce less volume. Now, they may have enough volume to make idle pressure look normal when it falls off under high load conditions. Now, the humps can be used to measure motor speed and how much work the motor is doing. We're going to first see how these humps are formed. Now, look up here on the right. There's two brushes in contact. There's one on the top, one on the bottom. We've only shown one here. Look, it's sitting across two different rings. 
This ring here has a decreasing current. It's going down because it's been in full contact. Now it's getting less contact. The contact on the left has increasing current flows. That's what's producing our humps. Now as you look over here on the other side, we have the maximum, the top of it, uh, at full contact, full current flow. So as you can see, as it moves around these, now these are actually connected to the front side of it, not off to the side like this. We cut the ends off for training purposes. This is what they really look like. We found out that when our customers start doing this test, they replace a lot more pumps. These are just some of the worn pumps we've hooked out. Look at the wear pattern. Look how some of these are worn down. And these dark areas are where the brushes aren't even making contact. So what you're seeing as you look at this particular one, there's areas where the brush makes contact that are going to be varying and changing. We're going to be using that characteristic a little bit, but look how worn these are. Would you want your wife driving on a dark road with a pump that's that worn? I'm telling you. We'll show you some patterns off a worn pump like this so you can appreciate it. Here is a normal pattern. Well, first of all, we look for the even humps. You notice they're almost the same. It's, this is going to happen as the motor rotates, and this is fine. But we're going to look at the average amps first. The average amps is the average power the pump is drawing. In this case, it's just over 3 amps. We've hit, set that arrow, top and bottom, and the arrow points right above 3 amps. Now, what's normal? Well, we're going to have to think about that a little bit. This is normal for that vehicle, just over 5 amps. So if the normal is just over 5 amps, and in this particular case, we only, in that last case, we only had 3, we have a problem. We have a rule of thumb that we help calculate the general guideline for amperage. We multiply fuel pressure by 0.12 to 0.13 to get an approximate current flow. And it varies slightly from pump to pump. And there's some variations, but this gives us a good approximation. We're going to round it off to make it even numbers. We're going to take a fuel pump pressure of 52 PSI off of a returnless pump system and say, okay, if we've got 52 PSI and we multiply it by 0.12, that's going to give us 6.24 amps. If we multiply it by 0.13, we get 6.76 amps. If we round that off to general numbers, we expect between 6 and 7 amps. Now, if we expect between 6 and 7 amps and we only get 3 or 5, we're going to start worrying about it. Anytime we get to the high side of the spec, we go to getting close to 7 amps. We suspect there's some kind of restriction in the system. Crimped fuel lines, a fuel filter that's clogged and causing a lot of back pressure that the system has to overcome. In the middle, is fine. But what if it's just a little bit low? We'd get worried if it's 4.5 to 5 amps. We'd go to really worrying and say, that doesn't look normal. Now what we do is we try to find some other symptom to tie to this. Do we have a lean fuel code? Do we have problems with poor performance on acceleration? Do we have another pump criteria that's failing? This is a worry point. We don't condemn anything at this level, but if it gets low enough, we start worrying about things. But we start here, we start, are there other indications of low fuel delivery? We would fail one if it's three to four amps. Now we're down to almost half what we expect to be. That's almost a surefire failure. In fact, we've had a number of shops that have taken this program and said, we've simplified it. We just look at current flow. And when it's wrong, we go check B plus at the pump and ground. Let's say it one more time. We say this because too often we find people ignoring the basics. We have to make sure we have B plus and ground at the pump. If we have B plus and ground and it's applied to those brushes, the only reason those brushes aren't drawing six or seven inches is the pump is is not making good contact, those brushes aren't making good contact, or the pump is just freewheeling, doesn't have any pressure, doesn't develop any pressure, and the amperage is too low. Let me say that one more time. If the pump is worn out and it's not creating enough pressure, it won't draw as many amps. If the brushes are worn, amp, worn out and they're not making good contact, we have resistance, electrical resistance, and it will not draw as much current. Either mode is a failure mode. So that's one of the big things right here. Current flow is one of the big findings, one of our most powerful things we're going to look at. Now let's walk this through and talk about failures. This is a failure with 40 PSI more. We have an average of 3 amps. 3 amps is just not enough. 45 PSI should give us 5.2 to 5.85. In this case, we're looking at about 4 amps. Now, as we said before, this is not a hard failure. Is there a fuel delivery problem by symptom? Now notice that we have a wider variation. This is not a perfect pattern, but just because it has this slight dip in it doesn't make it a bad pattern. 
the fact that it's slightly lower in amperage does make it. It's about an, almost two amps on the high side. So we've got to look at other things, other areas before we'll condemn this. Here's another example of some things to look for in normal patterns. This is a normal pattern, as you see there in the middle, but it has duty cycling. It has a duty cycle control that helps regulate pump speed. We're running about 4.4 amps average here, but it's duty cycle controlled. How do we know duty cycle controlled? Well, as we look over the schematic, we see the fuel pump is being fed by a fuel pump driver module. That module is going to duty cycle the signal to the pump to control current flow to give us a variable output pressure. This is a returnless system and it uses duty cycle control to regulate pressure. PCM has an input for our fuel pressure and will regulate the fuel pump by the pressure it's observing. So look for this and don't expect a perfect pattern. Now there are times when you're going to see some really bad patterns. When you see a pattern like this, the first question we want to ask you, make sure this is not a duty cycle pump. If this pump is duty cycled, it would be a pretty severe duty cycle, but don't judge too quickly. Now, what are we looking at here? If this, in fact, is a non-duty cycle pump, it's an intermittent fuel pump. Why is it intermittent? Well, let's check for dead zone. Right here across the top, if we stop the pump at one of these three peaks we're looking on the screen and restart it, it will start and run. But if, on the other hand, we start on the dead zone down here, if it stops in one of these three dead zones, it will not restart. This is a classic intermittent pump problem. Now, when you see this one, you've already failed average for current flow, believe it or not. I mean, it's average current flow in this right here is down around 3 amps when it should be up around 5 or 6 or 7. So we've already failed the average. This shows you why we'd have a 3 amp pump on some cars. Intermittent pumps, most of the time, intermittent pumps have very, very bad waveforms. But some bad waveforms that you think are bad will still work well and they won't cause a problem. So don't jump all over a waveform that's not uneven. But any waveform that drops to zero amps, like the example we just showed you, may fail to start if the brushes stop where there is no current flow. This is classic. A bad waveform in conjunction with additional test failures can be used as a replacement criteria. And we'll show you some of those replacement criteria. We're going to talk about the ripple voltage or the humps. The size of the humps or ripple voltage gives us some indication of how hard the pump is working. Hard working pumps that are overcoming pressure drops in the fuel filter or crushed fuel lines have a higher average amps and the ripple voltage will be higher. We're looking at the high end of the spec. Ripple voltage is higher. The max ripple we expect to see is 15% of the average amps. If it gets much above 15%, suspect there's a fuel restriction somewhere. Now, in this particular case, this one is in specs. But we measure from the top to the bottom what is the voltage. If it's greater than 15%, we don't fail the pumps, but we tie to tie it to something else. Did we have extremely high amperage? Yes, the high end of the curve. The pumps are big, the humps are big, high end of the curve, we may have restrictions. Do we have a problem? Wide open throttle where we're having max fuel demand. If we have restrictions, we may not be able to deliver sufficient fuel under high condition commands. Now, we can also measure the speed. And we're going to try to determine if we have a 6, 8, or 10 segment split ring. And there's a few 12s out there. Most current waveforms have differences in the shape that reflects the contact pattern of the brushes. We look for these repeating patterns. And we're going to show you ones that are hard to see. We're going to find easy ones. We're going to count the humps to see if there's 6, 8, or 10 humps, and in rare cases 12, in the repeating pattern. Now let's have a look and see. Here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. As it rotates around, these 8 brushes on the end are going to make contact. Here is a 10 segment right over here, same pile. We had all eights except 110. We didn't have any sixes and no 12s. I have a big pile of these. So we looked at something. Well, wow, they look almost perfect. Look again. Look real carefully. Notice that when we have our dotted lines, just two humps away, slightly ahead, the signal slightly lower. We picked a pump that's in good shape to make this more difficult to show you how to do it. Then, just after the line, it's low. So we picked a point we can identify eight repeating humps that have a characteristic before, characteristic after. This fits together. So we found a pattern that matches. Now we measure the time between these two points. In this case, the time difference is 9.12 
milliseconds. Now we've got two ways for you to pass this test. We're going to give you straight out time. The time should be, be, be between 6 and 17.6 milliseconds because that time is going to rate the engine RPM. If you don't want to do any more math, you can stop right here. But if you want to do the math, here's what there is. We use time to determine fuel pump speed. RPM is revolutions per minute, and a minute has 60,000 milliseconds. We want to know how fast it's going, so we divide 60,000 milliseconds by the time of one revolution. Our time was 9.12 milliseconds. So we divide 60,000 by 9.12. The result is the speed is 6,579 RPM. As we said, if you want to do the math, do it. If not, use the 6 to 17.6 milliseconds criteria. It'll work for you. So you can use either one you want to work. If we look at the numbers, 17.6 is 3400 RPM, and 6 is at 10,000 RPM. Pumps running under 3400 RPM are usually bad, but they usually have low amps as well, along with some pretty bad patterns in most cases. Pumps over 10,000 are either not pushing fuel or there's no resistance to fuel flow. If we take and do a fuel pump full flow measurement, we get the full flow, zero pressure, we'll have high RPMs. Pumps that are cavitating and pumping up air and not pumping fuel will have high RPMs. Pumps that are totally worn out and not moving fuel can have high RPM. So we can use a number of things here to find what's going on. Here we are with our fuel pump diagnosis. Bad patterns are not normally enough to condemn a pump unless they have a drop to zero amps like we talked about. We use this with other test failures before replacing a pump and it looks bad. Low amps with good B plus and good ground is likely the cause of low fuel pump volume which may result in poor high engine power, poor performance. Speed alone is not enough to condemn a pump, so check for additional failures. But now we have shown you an approach where you can do some measurements that go far beyond what most shops use. And when you use this, you're going to find you replace many more fuel pumps than you have in the past. Now, while you're replacing all those fuel pumps and solving problems, remember a few things. Don't forget that duty cycle modules can make the patterns look strange. Don't needlessly replace fuel pumps because you don't understand the fuel pump module. Try to tie performance problems with a test failure. This can help you find difficult to identify problems. I can't tell you how many vehicles our guys we work with have found by tying a problem. Pump pressure is not right, pattern is not just right, speed is not just right and the vehicle has a specific fuel delivery problem. When they change the pump, they fix the problem. Just remember, it's easy for a fuel pump to deliver idle fuel volume. Problems may not show up under the engines under full load. And the basis for this whole thing, we have B plus delivered at the pump, we have ground at the pump, and it can't draw the proper current flow. It is the pump. So keep that in mind and see if this doesn't help you solve some really unusual problems 